My name is Gonçalo Morgado. I am a team leader at Arxi, uh, Nodu Gold Partner in, in Portugal. And uh, we've developed a way to help uh, factories organize their productions, to simplify their processes, and to especially reduce the amount of inputs from uh, factory workers and reduce the risk of uh, you know, problems that might come fr from it, okay? Uh, so this is our, our wonderful team that has helped us develop all of this, okay? Uh, without them, this wouldn't uh, be possible. And uh, we do have some things to show you inside the, the factory, um, which is the, the next video that I'm, that I'm going to show. While the video is playing, I'm going to explain some of the processes that, it's going, that is going on there, okay? Um, it's going to be pretty abstract, but after that video, uh, I'm going to specifically talk uh, about what types of dashboards and uh, interactive dashboards and visualization dashboards that we have developed, okay? Um, so, yeah, here's the video. Um, this is from some of our clients. Um, pretty much uh, what we do is we have these uh, interactive dashboards, which are these tablets that you're seeing right now. We have things like calling a supervisor. I'm sorry because this is all in Portuguese, okay? The, 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 client, uh, the clients in this case were Portuguese. Um, so when you call a supervisor, it will communicate directly to uh, another dashboard to, to visualize in the factory floor. And um, we do have also the, pr the printing of tax autom automatically or by inputs. Uh, so what we've done is, uh, and I'm going to explain it uh, a little bit, um, uh, a little bit uh, in the next slides. Uh, sorry, this is yeah. There we go. Um, yeah. So. We pretty much have two types of, uh, of dashboards. We have a display dashboard, which, uh, which shows information in the, in the factory floor. So for example, let's say uh, something like uh, the current stock in the, in the warehouse, we can show that. Uh, we have things like, uh, you know, uh, incoming receptions of, of, of that week or that day, so um, they interact between each other. So in Nodu, um, what uh, usually happens, they do a purchase order for, for, uh, for, for something, for a, a, a raw material, and when they're going to receive it, we know that they're going to receive it in that uh, calendar, and we show it in the display dashboard. Uh, that's one of the things that we do. Uh, the other thing that we do is interactive dashboards, which is the ones that, sh that uh, the videos showed you. Uh, those interactive dashboards allow the users in the factory floor to uh, communicate to Odoo with simple actions, but to do complex things behind the, the, the back-end system. Um, so f let me give you an example. Um, when you're going to uh, declare a production or say that you've produced now 10 more of, the, of uh, X products, um, uh, what the only thing they do is they click on declare production, they, they say the amount that they produced, but inside Odoo we do all the actions that are needed to, um, you know, execute that, uh, that manufacturing order, okay, or that work order, depends. Uh, so for the display dashboards, um, we have a, a lot of types, okay. Um, these types that we have right now are types that we've personally developed, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, one thing that th this type of, um, of development allows us to, uh, you know, to, to do with our clients is uh, pretty much they, they only need to tell us what they want and we can reproduce it. Because, um, like I said before, all they do is input simple actions and we do all the complex stuff behind Odoo that, that is needed. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's continue with the display dashboard. So we have something like production status information, uh, which tells the factory workers if they're, they're on track, okay, with, with the daily production goals. So um, let's say, for example, that the production goal of this day was 200, uh, 200 products, okay? They set up in Odoo in the back end, uh, they, they set it up. It, they, it gets displayed to the um, to the to, to the that specific dashboard, um, and we also track if there's any deviations according to you know the calendar uh, the the resource calendar that the workers have at that time. So if they have shifts, we have we take that in consideration as well, and uh, that is all tracked. Then we have things like stock. So. Um, we actually have, and I think, I, yeah, there's stock and storage. Uh, in, in this case, what I mean by stock is we have a map, 
uh, we can create maps in the, uh, in the display dashboards that identify specifically where each, um, uh, where each uh, storage, where each uh, shelf is, okay? So that when the factory worker needs to see where, uh, you know, where is shelf A, uh, sh shelf A or shelf B or, or whatever, they just need to look at the dashboard and see, okay, so this is the map, here's where I, here's where I am, I need to move it to there. Okay. Um, f in terms of uh, shipping, uh, we also track a, a, a little bit like the, the, the purchase orders, we're tracking the, the shipping. So when they do sale orders, it, uh, uh, you know, Beisodu creates uh, delivery picking. We know that delivery picking has a scheduled date assigned to it, or they can change it, or, or whatever. Um, and uh, we display it in the in the dashboard, saying that there's there's an incoming uh, truck, or you know, uh, whatever they they the the the, the transporters uh, come with. Um, we know that there's a truck coming uh, in that specific day, at that specific hour, and we display it there so that all all the factory workers know that something is incoming, okay? Uh, so uh, th this, um, this type of dashboards allow us to, so the truck loading status is another one. Um, it, it allows all the factory workers to know what is happening in the factory without moving too much from their specific post, okay? Um, in the truck loading status, what we mean by this is that we have, le uh, we have uh, actually in, um, uh, some integrations with machines and specifically with our RFIDs. Uh, the RFIDs communicate to us that, uh, that specific serial number or lot number uh, um, that's, that the, the, the tag has. Uh, we know that that uh, tag is, in, is going to the truck itself. Uh, and we identify that, okay, it's this uh, serial number or this lot number got sent to this truck. We track it, we send it. In, in, in the, it for, for them, the only thing they do is they pass the products through the RFID uh, ant antennas. We know that it, it got passed, and us in the, in the back end with you know, some developments, um, increment the reserved quantity in the picking. So we know that that serial number, that lot number, got reserved in that specific, specific picking, and it's the one that it's going. It also allows, uh, allows them to uh, know if something got sent that is incorrect. So uh, let's say that uh, they, they can also do the reverse. They can re reserve everything to the picking, and the RFID antennas will communicate if the, the, the serial numbers or lot numbers are correct. If they were correct, if they're being shipped to the, to the correct truck, to the correct gate, to the correct uh, picking, okay? Um, and if it doesn't, we, we display it on the dashboard and also display a, or you know, send the sounds to the factory so that they know that they need to stop, they need to check, they need to see what the serial number, what the wrong, seri what the wrong serial number was uh, put in the truck, okay? Um, the packaging is also something that we can track. Like I said, we can track pretty much everything. Uh, but the packaging, uh, uh, sometimes there are products that need to go through a specific type of packaging, so, uh, others need, to, uh, need another specific type of packaging. And what we do is that we identify that tag, uh, we know that that product uh, is, you know, that, that product, so we know what the packaging is going to be, we display it on the dashboard, and the, the, the factory worker only needs to look at the dashboard, okay, I need to pack it like this, so put it in a box uh, or whatever the, <laughs> the packaging is, and go on. Um, the storage, um, we, also, we, we can also create dashboards that uh, um, display what the, uh, so let's say that, for example, we have a shelf that is the max capacity is 100. We know that only 100 products can go into that shelf. They have a, a you know, this is pretty abstract what I'm, what I'm saying, but uh, we, we need to imagine. Uh, but um, we have like uh, monitors there in the shelves that say, okay, zero of 100. When the products get uh, assigned to that, those shelves with barcodes or RFIDs, uh, whatever the, the action is, even manually in, in Odoo, uh, we track it. We know that the shelf is getting filled when it get, uh, and uh, we show it in the monitor saying, okay, 50, 60, 70, 100, you know, so just so they know uh, that the, the shelf is filled. So 
they don't waste too much time. Um, material order alerts is something that is, uh, uh, I think it's one of the most powerful dashboards that we've done because it's, uh, um, it's, um, it, it, it pretty much, um, it sums up what, what we've done. So what, what happens is in the interactive dashboards, they can, uh, they can access the, a bill of materials uh, of a product. I'm going to show all of this uh, for, for it, so don't worry much about it. But uh, when they select a material and ask for a, a transfer, we know that that dashboard asked for a transfer. We communicate to that interactive dashboard, or to the display dashboard, excuse me, uh, saying that there was an, a, uh, an internal transfer created for that, uh, that post, um, it, get this, it gets displayed there, and then the factory worker only needs to, you know, take the raw materials to, to, that, to that post, and the, when, when he does that, the dashboard clears, and, uh, you know, continue on. Um, I, I talked about reception, so I'm not going to go too much into this, uh, but yeah, if the purchase, purchase come in, there's a peaking, there's a scheduled date, we know that, we show it in the display dashboard. For the interactive dashboard, so we display work instructions for the products, okay? I'm going to speed up a, a little bit, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, they can choose productions uh, that they want. So let's say that they're uh, pr uh, manufacturing one uh, a product A right now, but they see that they don't have all the materials needed for that product A, they can skip to, to the next uh, manufacturing order, which will have a, uh, probably have a different pro pro product to manufacture, and you know they can continue on the pr with the process. They can start, pause, and end productions. It's pretty obvious. Uh, they can call the supervisor, so uh, they have a button there which calls the supervisor, which gets communicated to an interactive dashboard. And we do have an application that uh, communicates directly to the smartphone of that supervisor, and also to the uh, the smartwatch if he has one. Um, they can report breakdowns, which when they report a breakdown, they, they select a specific equipment uh, that, uh, that is damaged. And uh, what we do in Nodu is create a, um, a maintenance order so that you know, the maintenance team that is assigned there can continue on. We can print and report labels directly. Um, so when they print, uh, um, uh, let's say, the RFID tags in the, in the specific post, uh, when they select print, it gets automatically printed there, uh, which is pretty cool. <laughs> they can declare productions, like I, I said before. They can look at the bill of materials of that product, uh, and here is where they can choose the, um, you know, to do the, the internal transfers. And they have the partial reports. So let's say that there's a manufacturing order of 500 units, but you know, they, they won't produce the 500 units right now and this, uh, to, today. They're going to do it, uh, you know, um, along uh, the week. Uh, we have all those reports of when they declare, declare, declare production. So when we, they do, uh, I just produced 100, we get that report. We have a specific uh, PDF file that, you know, if they want, they can print it. If not, it's okay. Um, so, like I said, we have uh, RFID, um, RFID integration. Um, in, this, uh, uh, in this specific example that I'm going to show, show you, we integrated RFIDs with uh, an OPC UA connection to a, an industrial machine. Uh, so what we do is we, ident we identify the tag and we send that, uh, uh, by the, with the tag, we know what product is coming through that, uh, that antenna. We send it to the uh, interactive, uh, to the, sorry, to the display dashboard so that the factory worker knows what's uh, what's passing there. Uh, we then communicate through a PC UA to an industrial machine, which, de which then, you know, continues with the process. So uh, imagine uh, um, there's, there's certain products that you need to pack in a, certain, in a very specific way. And um, uh, to reduce the, the amount of, uh, of problems that comes, you, you know, uh, human mistake is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, is normal, right? So when, to reduce that, what we did is we directly inject the, uh, that uh, specific recipe for the packaging directly into the machine. Um, so that there's no, uh, there's no human mistakes here, and uh, for now it's going well. So we have a video to, to show you. Um, so this is the interactive dashboard that I was talking about. You can, uh, I'm sorry, this is all in Portuguese, but uh, <laughs> bear with me. So you can, uh, you can look at the PDF of the product, which tells you, uh, you know, how you need to set it up. Um, 
so right now he's going to start the production, but he's going, he's going to no, notice that he doesn't have the, the product that he needs. So he goes into the bill of materials, he adds the materials to the, to the requests, to the material requests, um, and then he asks for the, the materials to the uh, warehouse, to the raw material warehouse. Um, when he does that, we communicate to that uh, interactive dashboard, which is in the raw material warehouse, uh, and then they can continue on. We can pause the production because the raw materials aren't here yet. Um, and then we can, uh, so let me just pause here, sorry. Uh, so this is, this is what, I, what I was talking about when the, uh, the, um, the uh, transfer gets in. So in Odoo it creates an internal transfer in the dashboard which is, let me go back a bit, sorry. Uh, I don't think I can here, but uh, it's fine. Um, you can watch it in a video <laughs> later. Uh, the, the bottom half of it was the, the interactive dashboard, so when they validate that picking, it uh, gets removed on, from that dashboard. You can also, um, you can also print the specific tags. Uh, you can check what the partial reports that you've created till then were. Uh, like we said before, we can declare productions. When you do it, you validate the consumptions of those raw materials. Uh, you can actually validate cons the consumptions and print the, the partial report. Uh, and as you can see, it all gets communicated instantly. And this is all the fact what the factory worker looks at, okay? This is what he sees. Behind Odoo, all the actions are being performed, okay? So when, you, when we do this, so right now uh, we el eliminated the uh, partial reports. This is going to eliminate uh, the, the consumptions that were done in the raw materials. It's, uh, it removes the, the done states of certain uh, stock moves. Uh, so it, it does, you know, a, a lot of things. Uh, here we can print all the reports. Uh, you can print all of them. You can print in a specific section uh, of MOs, or you can print specific ones. Here is the, the process. So he's going to print a specific one, and it gets automatically printed. And this is actually a, an RFID tag. You can report a, a breakdown, like we talked before. When you do it, uh, it get, a warning gets created. It, you need to have that equipment created in, the, in, Odo, in Odoo, of course, and assigned to that specific work center. Uh, the, the factory worker identifies that, that flaw, that, uh, that, uh, you know, that breakdown, uh, with this equipment. And then um, when he does that, we create the uh, maintenance order in Odoo. Um, we create the maintenance order in Odoo. Um, which is uh, this one that we're seeing right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so to, to, sum, to sum this video up, this, it's going to play some, some more things. It's going to continue with the process. Uh, but to sum this video up, uh, I, I just want you guys to take into consideration that this is what the factory worker sees. Uh, behind Odoo, they don't, really, they don't really have access to it. They just you know, input their actions that they need to do. Okay, I need to ask for materials, I need to declare production, I need to, to report a breakdown, I need to call my supervisor because of uh, something. And as you can see, this is a, they have that application. They call the supervisor, it gets sent, sent to the application. Um, they do all, this, all these uh, things in like two to, uh, two to four clicks, but behind the system, it gets, you know, it uh, pretty much does all it needs to do. Um, yeah, so I don't know if uh, you guys have any questions. Um, yeah, but uh, just to sum it up, um, what the, the purpose of what we did here was to reduce the human, human flaws, to uh, do it in a very um, dynamic uh, way, uh, like, like, I, like I said before, the, these, these dashboards that we showed you are the ones that we've already implemented. And I, I don't, we believe that this shouldn't be limited to only MR, MRP or inv inventory um, dashboards, okay? So we know that we can do this to all the, the apps in Odoo. We are certain of this. We just need to know what the objective of our client is of, or what our main objectives are. Um, yeah, so, sorry. <laughs>Hello, thank you. Um, what size team would you have um, developing and maintaining that in the back end? So, sorry. Um, so right now, uh, we were uh, 
six people involved in this, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And we have uh, now three more involved to maintain the, 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 the system itself, yeah. But uh, um, this, was, this was very specific for certain clients. We could do this uh, with a smaller team. But eventually, if we want to adapt this to all realities, we need, you know, we need more people. <laughs> and to maintain the code and for performance sakes, especially in performance sakes, we do need to, we need to bump up the, the team. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is the tech, the tech stack you use to build these dashboards or clients? What's the technology stack you use to build this? Um, so we um, we did it in Python with uh, with, with all those uh, base base one right, uh, and then we used a lot of JavaScript and uh, I, I, I'm. I'm not sure if we used anything else, <laughs> to be honest, because my, my colleague there is uh, shaking his head, so I will agree with him. Uh, yeah, because, because I, I am not the developer, but I'm pretty sure it was only Python and uh, JavaScript. That, that's my answer. <laughs> Sorry. Any other questions? No? <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching. OK. If you want to, if you want to lear learn more, go to our website, arcsea.pt, and uh, we have a, a lot more information. Or if you want to talk with me after, it's fine. Okay, thank you.